We've seen that we can change the magnetic field by have it turning up or down the current through a solenoid, and that produces an electric field and a current in a loop surrounding the solenoid. But there's another way we can change magnetic fields it's by moving a magnet. So let's say, for example, we had a wire loop over here, and we had a bar magnet. Let's call that in the North Pole and the South Pole and we move it through the loop and out the other side. Will that also produce an electric field? Well, it should, because you've got the magnetic field of this. That's a typical magnetic field lines going around something like that. And so some of those field lines at the beginning are going through this loop. So there is a magnetic flux through the loop. And as you move the bar magnet along, the magnetic field will come stronger and stronger at the other loop, and so you get a bigger and bigger magnetic flux through the loop. So the magnetic flux, the total amount, surface integral, of magnetic field over the surface, the surface here, is going to change. Therefore, there should be a voltage. Let's try and work out which way it's going to go. Now, for a bar magnet, the magnetic field runs from North Pole to South Pole by convention, so it's going like this which means the magnetic field lines going through the loop are pointing in this direction. So the magnetic field here is going to be in this direction. As the magnet gets closer and closer to the loop, the magnetic field is going to get stronger and stronger, but still pointing in the same direction. So it'll change from something like this to something like that. That means that the change in magnetic field, the delta B, is in that direction, because you're changing this to that. So minus dB is going to be in that direction. And then we can use the right-hand rule. So the minus dB is in that direction. And you've got your hand curling around like this, which means we'll get an electric field going around like this. And then there's a current in that direction. How about once we've gone through? Let's say we've now got the bar magnet on the far side. It's keeping going on flying away. Well, the magnetic field is still going to point in the same direction because it's going around like this. So your B is going to be starting off pretty strong in that direction and get weaker. And so the delta B is now going to point in the other direction. Minus delta B in this way. So with the right hand rule, you've now got your thumb this way and your hands over like that. So as it goes through, the direction of the electric field will change. So instead of going clockwise here, it'll go anti-clockwise after it goes through. So that would be a signature of a magnet going through a loop. You would see a current going in one direction. So if you plot the current versus the time, it would go get more and more positive, be zero when the magnet's actually in the middle, because in the magnetic field, the flux is not changing. Then it will go negative and come back up again. And the total net current will be zero as it flies all the way through from plus to minus infinity. Interestingly, if you have a monopole, it's going to be quite different. A monopole will just have a spike in one direction, not the other. So it can actually make permanent currents um, not cancelled out as it flies through. And that's actually how monopole detectors work. So moving a magnet changes the flux and generates currents, just like changing the current in a, in a solenoid. And Faraday's equation applies equally to both.